Hello everyone, my name is Grace Farrow. I am a Solid Edge application engineer for Prolim, and today we're going to be going over Solid Edge frame design. So just to get started, we're going to touch base on our agenda. We're going to be looking at constructing tubing components, frame design environment overview, creating tubing path, and frame design editing. So the first section for constructing tubing components uh, we need to kind of look at our parameters for our tubing. So the tube has to be made in the ordered environment, and if you try to import a tube made from the synchronous environment, you're going to get an error that pops up that looks like this below. Um, and the tube must be made from one command. And I will show you an example of this process and kind of what I mean by that, and uh, show you kind of some troubleshooting there as well. So we can see here that I have a part file opened. This is my two inch square tubing that I made um, for our frame design example. And you can see I am following that first parameter of creating my tubing. I am in the ordered environment. And that second parameter is what we're going to take a look at right now. So we can either create a sketch and then extrude that sketch or the way that I like to do this and what I think is best practice is just go straight into our extrude command select the uh, reference plane that we want come in here I've already created this sketch before um, this is just a simple standard tube square tubing that I found so I'm just gonna make sure that it's fully defined here and once that's complete, I'm going to extrude this out about five inches, and voila, it's done. My tubing is complete. So this is perfect. Um, we are in the ordered environment. We only have one protrusion, and that's what I was talking about before in the PowerPoint. To do this the wrong way, I would have just uh, extruded out the overall geometry of my square tubing and then came back in and used my cut command to cut out the inside and hollow that out. That is not what we want to do. We just want to have that one extrude command and that is just because when we go into the frame design it is not going to register that cut command. It is just going to register that first protrusion. Um, so basically you will have uh, not hollowed out tubing but just square uh, tubing in your frame design and I don't believe that's what we're looking for. So from here we're going to move into our actual frame design environment. So I am going into my assembly file here that I've created, I've named it frame design. And to get to the frame design environment is under the tools tab. Okay, so kind of in the middle here, it doesn't really have a group name, but you can see under express route and electrical routing, we have frame. So this is how we open up into our frame design environment. And this is what the environment looks like. So just kind of to go over the frame design environment here, we're gonna start from left to right. Um, we do have the ability to create new planes. We have sketching tools here. We do have 2D and 3D. We also have some other 3D sketching tools here, such as Key Point Curve and ex uh, Path Express. We have some relate commands. We have dimensioning commands. We also have a frame command, and this is something that we're going to take a deeper look at in just a moment. Uh, we do have some assemble commands, configurations, and orientation commands. And then this closed frame is actually how we got back into our um, assembly environment. On our inspect tab, we do have some measure commands as well as our property commands here. We have uh, the ability to go into our variables table, you know, update active levels. We do have the ability to uh, bring in some add-ins. Um, we can also create simulation on our uh, structures here. And then this is our view tab, which goes a little bit more in depth for those orientation commands. So to get started inside of our frame environment, what we really need is either a sketch 
or a previous part file. And we will take a look at what I mean by that in a little bit. But we're going to just start off with our sketch, either a 2D or a 3D. I'm going to start off with a 2D sketch just to kind of see what that looks like. Um, I am just going to create a pretty large rectangle here. And once I have that finished, I'm going to go into my frame command up at the top. And these are our main frame options. This is where we can really specify exactly how we want our frame to look. We have the ability to uh, come in and say what orientation we want for our frame. We can say what kind of corner treatment we want. Uh, we do have miter. We have butt. Uh, we can come over here and say, actually, I want to specify a radius or maybe no corner treatment. And we can come in and say that we do want a specific orientation for that as well. And actually, when we drop down our, our options down here, this is kind of an important feature here. This is where we either want to say where we want to browse for a component, say, in our windows, or we want to select from our standard parts library. We will be browsing out to that component that I made earlier. And down below, you can see that there are some more advanced options as well. But once we have the options that we want, I'm going to say OK. And you can see that it is already pointing to that two inch square tubing part. If I wanted to change that out, you can always hit the button over here and browse out to um, the location that you have your files in and, and select your appropriate file. But uh, once we do that, we are going to select our sketch that we've created, say OK. And it is just going to instantly do that. It will try and restart that command. So we're just going to say cancel. So now you can see that this is my frame design. I'm going to kind of turn off my sketch so it's a little easier to see with the parameters that I asked for. So from here, we can keep adding uh, new frame components if we want to. We can see in the Pathfinder frame components, if we open this up, it says our frame four. And you can actually see as we select uh, any of these instances of our square tubing that we can actually come over and change the type of corner we want. So maybe change that from a miter or a butt here specifically, um, you know, trim extend. You can say that we don't want it at all. There's, there's so many options here for our corner treatments. So from here we can just keep adding um, new frame designs based on our application. So we can either create a 3D sketch, uh, and you can see that we do have a lot of 3D drawing and relate tools in here, or we do have the segment group that gives us a line command as well as an R command and uh, some relates here. So we're just going to start off with that. And it is going to give us an XYZ axis uh, that'll be highlighted in blue. And what this does is it gives us the ability to either lock to a plane or an axis so that we have more control over our geometry placement. So um, I can use X and Z to toggle back from the uh, axis or to our plane. So I'm going to toggle through Z and you're going to see it highlight different colors here. So I'm going to do just a kind of a quick sketch here. And make this the same. And then if I hit X on my keyboard, what it's going to do is it's going to lock to different planes. So you can see here the difference here. Um, I am going to just create a sketch like this. And once I have that done, I can go back to my frame command. Uh, specify my options again. Maybe I don't want any corner treatment. Say OK. Select my chain. And you're going to see it update from here. OK, so we can always go back in here and kind of fix this. And um, you can see, you know, those corner treatments have all been fixed, which is 
perfect, just what we wanted. So that's kind of more designing in 3D space outside of actually creating a 3D sketch. So another really useful tool is that we can bring in a part file and actually have that frame command uh, create framing from that part file. Let me show you an example of that. So I am going to come in here and delete out these frame commands here. I'm going to have to delete that. Okay, so once I come into my parts library, I have this part file tubing that I created, and I'm going to just bring that right in here. So from here, we can go up to our frame command, and we can go through our options again. This time I am going to want my butt corner features. And we do have the ability to select either a face or a body on a part file. And it is going to actually select the edges of our body that we select or our face that we select. And it's going to create that framework from those edges. So I have a body. I have my part file selected. I'm going to say OK. And you're going to see this automatically update. So we can see that it is following the edges here. It's a little easier if I come in here and turn off my part file. We probably would have to come in and kind of fix up some of this side, maybe edit some of the dimensions. But whenever we have our frame design just as we like it, it's going to try and start up that command again, and I'm going to cancel that. But we can go to our, our frame components and kind of drop through all of these different components and maybe change. Uh, change the ends a little bit again as we did in the last section. So it, it's kind of, uh, you know, a case-by-case -case basis, what you want to do with your file, how do you want it to look. Uh, you, you have a lot of aspects that you control inside the frame environment. So once we have our frame how we want it, we can always close out of our frame environment. And now we can add different features to our frame. So let's say in an example that we want to, uh, you know, add holes to this frame, we can create assembly hole features inside our assembly environment. So it's not like you're losing any functionality inside the assembly environment. Uh, we just gained a lot of functionality using our frame design. So again, since we are in the assembly environment, we can always add in other parts. We can, you know, assemble things on, onto our frame design, around it. Uh, but once we have, you know, the assembly that we're looking for, we can always see what it looks like to create a draft of our framework. So for this example, inside of our drafting environment, I brought in my assembly. And what I did for this view was I hid that uh, original part file that I built my framework off of. And the tool that I'm going to show you is how to um, show those specific lengths of our tubing using our parts list. So I come up, I'm going to select my parts list, I'm going to select, you know, my view here, place. We can see that it doesn't really give any uh, lengths of our tubing. So once I go into options uh, and we come down to columns, there is a cut length down here that I can add as a column. And it will automatically update and it will show us our cut lengths based on, you know, our item numbers for our square tubing. So this is just another great tool. Um, of how to help you along with using your, your tubing and getting you comfortable with the frame design. So thank you for attending today's webinar. If you have any questions or would like to see any other demonstrations, please send me an email at grace.farrow at prolim.com. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you.